Carnival originated as a pagan festival in ancient Egypt to usher out winter and celebrate the beginning of spring. When Alexander the Great conquered Egypt, the ancient Greeks adopted the festival. The Romans assimilated the festival from the Greeks and it was later overlaid with Christian meaning to become the festival of Carnevale. The word carne means meat in Latin and vale means farewell. In the Catholic calendar, Carnevale, farewell to meat, is a feast before the fast of Lent. In 18th century Italy, people preparing for Lent would throw indulgent fancy dress parties and gorge before the fast. As Christianity spread across Europe, so too did the celebration of Carnival. Colonization exported it across the world. Portuguese colonists took Lent to the shores of Brazil, where they had also taken an estimated four million African slaves. Over time, European rituals fused with African ones to create Brazil's world-famous carnival. The flamboyant street parties are a celebration of Brazil's mixed heritage and its big business. On the Caribbean island of Trinidad, the Festival of Lent was introduced by French colonists. Slaves, excluded from these celebrations, created their own parties to the soundtrack of Calypso music, which mocked the French. This is now an integral part of Trinidad's carnival. In India, carnival is only celebrated in the southern state of Goa, where Portuguese colonists ruled for over four centuries. Parades occur throughout the state with bands, dances and floats. Carnival is known as Mardi Gras in the American city of New Orleans. Carnival is not just a party in the sun. Quebec holds the third biggest carnival celebration in the world. From humble beginnings, carnival has become a truly global celebration with millions of revelers all over the world contributing billions of dollars to the party. The Toronto Caribbean Carnival is one of the most anticipated events in the city. Parade is one of the most mesmerizing things to see. People of all different walks of life coming together in these famous vibrant costumes. And if you didn't know, there's actually a history to these costumes. So I'm going to briefly share with you its origin story. So Toronto Caribbean Carnival itself is inspired by Trinidad and Tobago's Carnival, which brings together people with food and dance and masquerades and oral traditions. Carnival's roots go all the way back to 1783, where for half a century in Trinidad and Tobago, French plantation owners organized masquerades and balls before observing Lent. Slaves were not allowed to participate, so they formed their own version called Candoulet. They would sing and dance, but it was meant to be a mockery of their oppressors. Their own masquerades were held and memorable characters were born out of this, like Dame Lorraine, which mimics the formal dress of French women at the time by flaunting padded chests and elaborate hats and fans. Another popular character is the Jab Molassi, or Molasses Devil, usually dressed with wigs and horns. And this dates back to the Sugar Estate days, when freed slaves who used to work on the Sugar Estates would rub themselves in molasses to play mass and also to disguise themselves so they wouldn't be reprimanded. And today, the character has evolved into different colored devils, but specifically blue. These methods of mockery were intended to be a form of resistance and a form of expression at the time. Now, just like with any celebration, Carnival has evolved over time, and the traditional Candelay costumes aren't really as popular today, especially in Toronto, in comparison to the vibrant and elaborate costumes adapted from the Brazilian Carnival. However, it's still really important to note the history. Take a trip down memory lane and take a look at the past, present, and future of North America's biggest cultural festival. <laughs> In 1967, the Caribbean community in Toronto was asked to organize a special event to commemorate Canada's 100th birthday. That one-time event was so popular, it happened every year since, and that is how Caravana was born. The festival went through a couple of name changes and now is officially known as the Toronto Caribbean Carnival. Denise Herrera Jackson says over the years, the festival has really sparked a curiosity about Caribbean culture within the community. It 
really brought all the communities together and it was really important that their contribution should be acknowledged because in bringing up that aspect of culture, I think made it much easier for our Caribbean immigrant culture to be amalgamated into a celebration. Up until 1971, Carnival started at Varsity Stadium and made its way to City Hall. Then it walked its way along University Avenue for about 20 solid years until jumping and waving over to Lakeshore Boulevard and the CNE grounds where it's been ever since. Dalton Higgins covered Carnival for several years and says that last move in 1991 really changed the vibe of Carnival. To be perfectly honest, I'm since it left. Um, Why and is that? Also why is that? Yeah, I mean, I think because, you know, the, the Toronto uh, TTC, you could just sort of re-enter the parade route, leave, jump on the TTC. It didn't feel like you were kind of stranded down at the bottom of the city mm. and just kind of, you know, sequestered away from the actual city. Right. Um, so well, when I go to other street parties, festivals, and I take to the band for the Pulse on St. Clair, like it's in the city. These can just access it quite easily. <laughs> Just like any other massive event with such an extensive history, Carnival has been through a lot of changes over the years. But as we look ahead, Anissa Omorali says the future of Carnival is a bright one. I think that we are going to be growing in this environment and we are going to be changing. Carnival is dynamic and Toronto allows us to grow that. Um, we, are, we are also going to be reaching out and I think it's really clear that people in Toronto have absorbed us as part of who they are and we are going to be a million now, not just of, of Caribbean people, but we are going to be Toronto's country. <laughs>
I believe that we should still have the name Caribana. It means the people of the Caribbean, our people from the Caribbean. I used to volunteer for years, for hours and hours, and we were quite excited. People matter. People truly matter. The environment matters. Art and culture matter. Caravan, Caravan. Caravan is, is a cultural expression of the people of, of, um, of Canada, which has been, uh, how can I put it, uh, exported from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean to, to, to the people here in Canada. You have the music, trained musicians, skilled musicians of all sorts. You have also artists manufacturing. You have people who are skilled in organizing. And uh, all these come together on a street parade. So in 1967, there was an opportunity, I think it was Expo 67, there was an opportunity to give uh, Canada a gift. And that gift was actually a piece of the cultural pie that, that was uh, started in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and that was the inception of Caravana. They had a parade and they were the masquerade and everything. And they started at 11 o'clock, 11, 11.30 at Vasta Arena and end up on the island by 2 o'clock. It's a way of enjoyment, a bit of nostalgia, because it reminds you so much of the carnival at home and what we were trying to portray here. So it means very much to me. First of all, it means my culture. Belonging to a culture. People become involved, people feeling a sense of they can let their hair down, that they can relate to other people, the foods, all these other kinds of things. Um, those things changed Toronto, changed Canada. And then it get bigger and bigger. It's, it, 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 it didn't start, it said like a street party. It didn't start it as any business or anything. But the government saw it as a way of bringing in a lot of money into the country. But they never give us any money. So the, the festival is always, it has never, ever in all its life been um, structured and given the kind of means to do what it ought to be doing. Unfortunately, I don't think Caravana does benefit from the amount of money that it brings into the city. Uh, there's a huge economic impact. Um, the last figure I remember is $438 million a year of economic impact into the city of Toronto. And that money goes to hotels, restaurants, airlines, um, you name it, um, entertainment district, clubs, club promoters. They all make tons of money off of Caravana. And then the people that actually put it on the participants, the volunteers, the mass, mass makers, and the actual caravan board itself doesn't see that money and doesn't see a profit. And, and the real objective would be for that money to serve the community. It was 2004. And, um, before, before leaving for Australia, I, 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 I went to my um, uh, office manager and I told her that uh, make sure we get everything prepared for the audit um, because uh, our books have to be audited every year since we're getting public funding. We have to be audited. I heard that some of the directors, the, the elected directors, I don't know what they were looking for, they went into the office and took the, the books, or I don't know, I don't know what the motivation was. It, up to today, it, 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 it befathers me. Why would you take the books um, for, of the organization to check them for whatever reason? And um, they, took them, they took it to their homes, to their homes. So therefore, when the auditor came in, the books were not available for audit. You can imagine that. Those six directors were expelled from the organization. When we took over the responsibility on the board at that time, we had not known that there were some issues that were actually occurring since 2004, 2005. And as a result, the city had moved a motion that if we did not have a clean audit in four and five, 
we, uh, we the caravan and the organization, would be defunded. The funding was withheld um, from Caravana for 2006. As far as I know, that there was an agreement between the city, FMC, which is the Festival Management Committee, and the, the Caravana Arts Group for the FMC to manage the money and distribute the funds for one year in 2006. After 2006, they were supposed to dissolve and um, let Caravana pick up where they left off after reorganizing and carry on. Um, Throughout that time, there was a relationship between the Caravana board, the FMC, and the city that we all, you know, Caravana felt they could trust these people and worked along with them and then allowed them to run the festival in 07 as it's, it was still restructuring. By 2008, um, the Festival Management Committee had sold title, spon title sponsorship to Scotiabank. However, they did not consult the Caravana board or ask, you know, is this permissible, is this okay? There's nothing wrong with a sponsor, but to corporatize a cultural event that had a 40-year, almost 40-year history, it was almost a, like an insult. Um, it kind of made it look like Caravana was up for sale, when in fact it wasn't. FMC decided that they would not uh, use the name. And I suppose it was their way of getting out of this situation and um, I don't want to assume for them but now that I look back their calculation might have been look the name is not important the festival is important so leave the name we have the festival we're gonna be okay what has happened is the funding that was allocated towards Caravana was redirected to another group here we are we're, we're in a situation where they can't use the name because they are not Caravana, they're actually just the Festival Management Committee, and we don't have the funding. So, like I said, it's not that Caravana became Scotiabank, Toronto Caribbean Carnival, it's just that that other group intercepted the funding that's marked for Caravana and, and has been doing what Caravana does under a different management. The, the community spirit for this festival has been damaged significantly because I know people have said to me, okay, since a bank owns it, let them pay. We are not going to volunteer. So now it's difficult to find people to volunteer. And that was the glue that held the festival together. People felt they belonged, it was community. I would hope to see a country that would truly appreciate art for art's sake. Not art for corporations who want to have uh, portfolios to advance their own interests. We need more history for our younger generation. They don't have the history. And that is my whole desire. Um, I would like to see it continue. I would like to know that um, when I have left this earth that I know that my great-grandchild might one day be playing mass. i like to see us get back to parade, and, uh, and I think we will. It's sad because no matter what you call it, it is Caravana. It's a cultural festival and the community shouldn't be divided based on the city interest in making money. My mission as chair is to reunite the community and, and I'm, I'm doing all I can with the other board directors, with the Caravana members and the volunteers to remind our community that this is a cultural festival, this is about us connecting and it's about the youth too and the next generation. It's not about what we think or our past grievances or bad blood, it's about allowing our youth to carry on the legacy that was started and to, and to benefit from it.
Kesha. Yeah, that was sick. Coming up next.